Hello, Louisiana. I'm Kerry Martin, and this is the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast for Friday, September 27th of 2019. Welcome to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, a look at the latest news in Louisiana agriculture. Now, here's the host of the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, Kerry Martin. It was a mostly quiet week in the grain markets as Midwest harvest starts to get underway. We'll visit more about the markets with Greg Fox, Grain Marketing Specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association, coming up later on the podcast. But first, here's a look at news headlines. Some extra help is on the way for farmers who were prevented from fully planting their crops this year. Gary Crawford has more from Washington. The Supplemental Disaster Bill had $3 billion in it for agricultural losses. And included in that was losses related to prevented planting of insured crops in calendar year 2019. Martin Barbary runs the USDA's Risk Management Agency. He's just announced some extra or plus up payments for some farmers with prevent plant losses. If you're a producer who is getting indemnity payments for crops you couldn't plant due to floods or soggy fields, you will receive this plus up payment from the government, which will be delivered by your insurance company. Delivered automatically. Now, depending on the insurance option you have, that payment will be either 10% of your prevent loss indemnity payment or 15. Now, why this extra help? This has been such a tremendously tough year for producers. Commodity prices are low. Frankly, insurance guarantees aren't as high as we would like them to be based on those prices, and and Congress just felt like this was something they needed to do for producers. The payments should come quickly. We hope to have payments out in mid-October. Now, in all of last year, prevent planting losses, about 2 million acres. This year, so far, over 14 million. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. The U.S. House of Representatives is beginning work on impeachment proceedings for President Donald Trump. So will that derail progress on passing the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement? U.S. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue says he doesn't even want to think about that possibility. I do not even like to contemplate the fact the USMCA would not get passed. It's just, uh, it's, it's an evil thought. And uh, I think, again, I believe it will get passed. I think Congress uh, on both sides of the aisle will come to realize that this is a great trade agreement with our closest neighbors. And the world is watching. If we do not, if we cannot get an agreement with the people on the north and the south of us, how can we agree, have an agreement with the world about trade? And uh, we've created an ecosystem of agricultural production where uh, we have to export. We're blessed in the country to be able to have food security for our country and uh, produce so much we have to go elsewhere. But I just don't even want to contemplate the uh, non-passage of a USMCA. There is some good news coming out of Washington for the U.S. ag industry. Don Molino explains further in this report. The Senate has passed a continuing resolution that keeps the government operating through November 21st. Reese Langley with the National Cotton Council says this will help the agriculture industry, at least in the short run. At this point, Congress has not passed any of the full-year appropriations bills for fiscal year 20 that starts on October 1. It restores full funding for USDA's Commodity Credit Corporation, which will ensure that the department can continue to make the market facilitation program payment, as well as Farm Bill, ARC, and PLC payments that are due this fall. Also, last week, the Senate Appropriations Committee approved their version of the Agricultural Appropriations Bill for fiscal year 20. In that legislation, it does include the full requested funding level for the cotton pest account, which is important for the ongoing boll weevil eradication program, as well as increased funding for the three USDA cotton ginning labs that are operated across the cotton belt. I'm Don Molino on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. This has been National Rail Safety Week, providing an opportunity to raise awareness about the dangers around rail crossings. Michael Clements has the story. The American Farm Bureau Federation is observing Rail Safety Week by urging rural residents to be safe around trains. Public records show trains hit a person or vehicle roughly every three hours. Rachel Malle, Executive Director of Operation Lifesaver, says it's important people stay alert at railroad crossings. People are more and more distracted and they're not paying attention when they're driving, when they're walking, when they're biking. The biggest challenge is changing that human behavior and getting people to be mindful of their surroundings and to look 
look both ways at railroad crossings. Rural rail crossings are more dangerous than others and typically have fewer warning signals and signs to keep people safe. Operation Lifesaver has five tips for farm equipment operators. Slow down as you approach a railroad crossing. Two, stop no closer than 15 feet from the crossing. Stop, look, and listen for a train. Roll back and forth in your seat to see a round obstacle. Four, do a double take. Look both ways again before crossing. And five, go. Once you start across the track, do not hesitate and do not change gears. Molly says following rail safety tips can empower others to do the same. Rail safety is within everyone's power to be safe around the railroad track. You can be a model to your families and your friends. You can wait behind the gate. You can wait when you see the lights flashing. Be safe and stay alive and make sure that you communicate that with your family and friends. Michael Clements, Washington. That is a look at some of the latest news headlines in Louisiana agriculture. Remember, you can always check our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.com. We update it every weekday with all the latest news and happenings in our state's agricultural industry. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to our daily e-newsletter. You'll see a maroon button right in the middle of the page. It says click here to receive our daily news update. Click on that button, fill out your name and email address, and we'll send our daily e-newsletter. It's called The Daily Voice, and we'll send it right to your inbox every weekday morning at 5 a.m. Now let's look at the markets on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. The soybean and corn markets moved lower today in a mostly quiet trade. That's according to Joe Lardy, market analyst with CHS Hedging. Well, I think today the markets are just quiet and they're just waiting. And next week, I think, is when we are going to start to get that flurry of activity. So for today is I'm kind of already looking past today and looking into next week when we have, uh, I think we're going to see the actual month-end activity um, take place on Monday. We've got the quarterly stocks report on Monday, and then we're within sniffing distance of the next WASD report. And on top of that, there is a lot of cool air that's forecasted to come down. Now, the question I think the market continues to look at is, is the cool air going to be cold enough to cause any damage, and if so, where, and if so, how much? And I think the, the market has really gotten into the mentality lately of, well, you got to prove it to me. And whether it's been political stuff or, or weather or demand, the market is in that you got to prove it to me, and then I'll trade it once I know what's really happened. Soybeans finished lower with November down 5 and a half, 883. January soybeans down five and a quarter, eight ninety seven and a half. Corn finished lower also. December corn down a penny, three seventy one and a half. March corn down one, three eighty three and three quarters. July wheat was up three and three quarters, closing at five oh two and a quarter. Rough rice closed higher with November rice up seven and a half, twelve fifteen and a half. January rice up eight cents, twelve thirty seven. November sugar up five. Closing at twenty five eighty. Now with a look at the cotton market, here's Don Molino. Cotton futures at New York slightly higher on Friday. Upland cotton export commitments are now four point nine percent below the same time last year at eight million five hundred sixty thousand running bales. That's fifty six percent of USDA's two thousand nineteen twenty export projection, lagging last year at sixty eight percent, but well above the normal of forty eight percent pace. Thursday's cotton on call report showed mills with 23,656 contracts for unfixed call sales for December, with unfixed call purchases of 36,639. The Codlick A index unchanged on September 26 at 71.40 a pound. The average world price updated to 53.19 a pound, down 143 from the previous week. New crop December cotton, 61 even, up 72. March, 61.70, up 71. The spot market price, 60.90, up 78. I'm Don Molino on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. At the Red River Livestock Auction, Cachetta, Louisiana this week, three to 400 pound steers brought a dollar to a dollar 70 a pound. Four to five weight steers, a dollar to a dollar 47. Five to six weights range from 85 cents to a dollar 42. Six to seven weight steers, eighty-nine to a dollar twenty-three, 
with 700 pounds and higher, bringing in anywhere from 60 cents to $1.22 a pound. Cow-calf pears brought $280 to $1,500 a pair. On the futures market Friday, we saw sharply higher prices. October live cattle up 207, closing at 10502. October feeder cattle up a dollar 22, 14432. November feeder cattle up a dollar 52. We have a trade deal with Japan. We're working on a trade deal with China. Midwest harvest is getting underway, but it's delayed by rain. How are all of those factors affecting the grain markets? We'll ask Greg Fox, Grain Marketing Specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association, coming up next on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. This is Trace Atkins for the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation. Louisiana farmers and ranchers dedicate their lives to producing the food we eat and the clothes we wear. Agriculture touches all of us every time we sit down at the table. So support Louisiana agriculture by joining Farm Bureau. And you don't have to be a farmer to join. If you're already a member, we thank you. Your membership supports farmers and ranchers right here in your local community. The Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation, the voice of Louisiana agriculture. The Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Our guest today is Greg Fox. He's a grain marketing specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. And Greg, as we're looking at these markets here to wrap up the week on Friday, looks like beans and corn both kind of drifting lower today. What's going on? Yeah, I can't seem to get a whole lot of momentum on Friday. You know, we started with some Good news in the week that, you know, China's buying stuff. Um, I feel like the market is is being cautious. And also from what I'm hearing from other folks in the industry is that the trade is being cautious because we've seen this song and dance before where China buys beans and then they end up canceling them later down the road. So I think that's what the trade is being careful about is, yeah, they bought it. We don't need to run the markets up too high because of the excitement. Let's let them actually get closer to having to show up and pick this stuff up before we get too excited. Any developments in the China situation that you heard of this week? No, you know, some of the normal stuff. And I think that, again, is why the trade is being cautious that, you know, things are going well. Talks are great. I think we're going to get something done, you know, with some of the reports that we've heard. But we've heard that before and nothing got done. So nothing really new. Um, they did buy some, you know, they they bought stuff on paper so again we have to actually see them pick it up you know there's still talks that they want soybeans and pork and so the, those tariffs have been lifted on those items we just need to to physically see those boats show up and get loaded and get down the road i think then the market can get excited and then we can kind of pay attention to weather and you know export business to help these markets you know gain some traction and improve a little bit Hey, we had the U.S.-Japan trade deal announced this week. They signed some papers on that. It didn't seem like it really had much of an effect on the market, did it? No. You know, Japan has always been, you know, a good trade partner with us. Um, I don't know all the details of that trade deal, but, um, you know, I think the market has kind of already been in place for those guys. Um, I think this will help them approve some more of the GMO-type varieties. Um, but, uh, you know, the trade to those, to Japan has always been somewhat steady. So we're not picking up any new business. I don't think, you know, maybe down the road, they'll add more volume to their purchases. But, you know, of course, China, just the volume they purchase is the one that everybody's really paying attention to. You mentioned weather a minute ago, Greg. Midwest weather seeing uh, some rain showers this week. I know that they are about ready to put some combines in the field up there. Uh, how is all that situation in the Midwest affecting the market right now? You know, corn harvest is delayed a little bit. Some areas have been able to get started. Uh, some have not. So it's a delayed harvest that's now delayed even more in some areas. So that gave us some support early on the corn side um, and beans as well because we thought, you know, this week we would see a lot of areas start cutting soybeans. I've asked a question this morning to some folks that we know that way, and uh, they're seeing uh, 
you know, scattered places start cutting some soybeans. Um, but again, like you said, they're expecting rain again today and into the weekend. So it's going to slow things down. So until they kind of really dry out, we're not going to really see a lot of news on the bean harvest and probably the same thing on corn. You know, we'll probably see corn on Monday in the Midwest, you know, around 10, 15 percent harvested, if if that. Well, how about here at home, Greg? What's the word out in the field on the soybean harvest? I know we're, we're right in the middle of it. So what are you hearing out there? Uh, truck unloads have been great. You know, we're seeing a lot of bushels start to show up now. Quality has cleaned up in some areas. Uh, so we're full-blown harvest. If the weather can cooperate, I think we're just going to continue to grow and uh, just see the, the volume pick up more and more every day. But uh, yields have been kind of mixed. Uh, you know, some of that early stuff didn't do very well. Some of the later stuff seems to be doing a little bit better. But overall, it still feels like we're going to have a down year here in Louisiana. Well, I know you don't like to see a down year, but at least this year we can get a crop out of the field. That's a huge improvement over what we had at this time last year. Yeah, and that's been some enthusiasm from folks that, you know, at least when I show up, I get my truck unloaded. You know, some facilities still have some damage limits, but others don't. So the options are there that, you know, if I don't want to, if I want to pass this one up, I can go down the road and they'll dump me. So that's been huge. And we're not looking at super high damage. You know, we have some lows that are that are high damage, you know, 20 plus damage. But, you know, we're seeing a lot of 10 to 15 percent damage, um, which is fairly normal for South Louisiana under a good year. You're going to see those loads just because of the insect pressure that we deal with year in and year out. So, you know, it's nothing over the top like we saw last year. Greg Fox with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. Thanks a lot, Greg. Have a great weekend. Yes, sir. You too. Appreciate it. And that puts the wraps on another week of the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. We'll be back with you on Monday. But in the meantime, be sure to connect with us on social media. We're on both Facebook and Twitter. The handle is at Voice of LA Ag. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday right here on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Thanks for listening to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. This podcast is produced by Kerry Martin and the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation. For more information, be sure to check out our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.org and lafarmbureau.org.